Good morning, everyone. So welcome to our second uh, monthly Treat IR live case. We're here from uh, Mount Sinai, New York. To my left is one of my partners, Dan Shilo, and uh, we're going to show an interesting case today of uh, a filter removal, uh, but a little, it's a bit more than just a filter removal. It's a bit tilted. Um, Raj, uh, Dr. the other Dr. Patel, and uh, Dr. Nowakowski, and uh, Dr. Panit Rana are going to introduce the case uh, shortly. We have Mona Rana Day. Uh, also joining us on uh, on the Zoom from uh, from Mount Sinai. I'm sorry, Mariah, who used to be at Mount Sinai, now, who's now at UCLA. Mount Sinai. <laughs> she's Mount Sinai. Wow, she's wearing the Mount, 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 Mount Sinai Sinai swag right so there. Awesome swag. Exactly, exactly. So now she's uh, she's uh, IR extraordinaire at UCLA, um, and uh, she's going to help us uh, give some commentary on the on the cases. Um, so okay, so uh, so again, back to uh, Scott and Raj. So there's uh, Dr. Nowakowski, the other Dr. Patel. Um, and uh, Dr. Rana, who's sort of hiding there in the corner. So I'm presenting a case of a 62-year-old male with IVC filter placed in October 2023, who's here today for a retrieval. He has a past medical history significant for HIV, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, fibromyalgia. Um, social history includes tobacco use, substance abuse, and also alcohol abuse, uh, no known allergies, um, in regards to the history, uh, he was admitted back in October for shortness of breath. He was found to have a right upper lung cavitary lesion um, and intermediate risk submassive PE. Uh, patient was started on heparin drip. Uh, hospital course was unfortunately complicated by submassive okay. hemostasis yeah. requiring bronchial artery embolization, which resolved uh, post embolization. Um, and then hospital course was then further complicated by rectal bleeding. So multidisciplinary discussion with the PERT team resulted in consensus of uh, placing an IVC filter. Uh, patient underwent transfemoral option IVC filter placement on October 9th, 2023. Prior to discharge, patient was then trans transition to Eliquis. Uh, currently, he's tolerating anticoagulation without any further episodes of bleeding. So he was referred to us uh, for evaluation of IVC filter retrieval. The initial imaging uh, shows an uh, infrarenal IVC filter that was placed via transfemoral access on in October 2023. Um, there was 19 degrees of tilt in relation to the IVC. And non-invasive imaging uh, CT venogram was obtained that demonstrates no cavel or IVC filter thrombus. There is angulation of the filter with concern it's that the tip is embedded in the IVC and like the medial wall of the IVC. Yeah. I need a uh, here are some coronal and sagittal reformat that kind of demonstrate the IVC filter position. You get a 12 French sheath, 1230. So assessment and plan. Uh, this is a 62-year-old male history of PE with contraindication to AC due to hemorrhage, status post IVC filter placement. Patient is now tolerating AC without further bleeding. Um, so the plan today is for IVC filter retrieval. Um, considerations for him in particular are, uh, this, is a, this filter has been in for at least six months now, um, and there's approximately 19 degrees of tilt, and the CT is concerning for an em embedded hook. Thanks, Pete. I think Raj and Scott are still working to get everything set up here. Um, so Dan uh, and Mona both, both um, when you guys, uh, so obviously we have a, 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 not a, not necessarily a filter clinic, but we try to take a lot of care in making sure any filters that we placed, you know, we put the note into the chart and stuff and, and try to get them to follow up. But uh, when they do come to follow up, uh, what are you doing, are you doing for pre-op imaging or anything like that, especially in someone who's, you know, on eloquence or not on anticoagulation? At UCLA, um, we have monthly filter clinic meetings before the patient even comes to clinic where we triage all of the lists of uh, essentially of patients that have had filters either placed or retrieved. And we kind of document do this. Um, on a monthly basis in this Excel spreadsheet, all of our lists. And then everyone that got a filter placed um, gets triaged into the bucket of straight to procedure for removal. If it's uncomplicated, if it is complicated, then they need to be seen either by NP clinic or a physician clinic. And so um, we kind of also segregate the patients based on complexity and, uh, um, you know, should they just be seen yeah. by an NP yeah. to let's, make sure they understand what's happening. And, and then the ones that come to the physician clinic typically are someone that's going to require a little bit more of, get the glide. you know, retrieval, forceps, filter retrieval kind of discussions. And um, 
So all of that goes into play okay. before we bring a patient back. And when are you, can you talk a little bit more about what you consider complex when you think it might be complex? Okay. Like what are your hard cutoffs for usually like if somebody, like a sample hard cutoff for me is if somebody else has attempted retrieval, I will almost always, uh, unless I have like those floral images and I'm really confident I would get a CAT scan. What are some of the you know hard stops for you in terms of uh, complex and you would get more imaging? I mean, majority of our patients are, you know, someone's that, uh, that we're seeing may have a history of cancer, may have had bilateral lower extremity DVT at some point. They might have had, you know, prior filter retrieval attempts that have been unsuccessful. So we usually work them up with a duplex ultrasound of their legs to make sure that the veins are actually open, or if they're not, then we want to know that, um, you know, if someone is a candidate for reconstruction, we might have that conversation with them at the same time. And then um, we want to also understand what their essentially history is in terms of where are they in their cancer treatment journey, I guess, if someone is a neurosurgical candidate, um, you know, should we be taking this filter out right now? Or, you know, are they ever going to be able to tolerate anticoagulation, uh, things like that. So essentially, you know, CTV for anyone, like I said, anyone with history of cancer, anyone with prior DVT, anyone with prior retrieval attempt, anyone that's had filter for greater than a year, anyone that has a tilt on their filter okay. that we think is embedded, or if there are extruding filter struts, they're all getting CTs. Um, and then uh, unless they're truly just, you know, simple uh, retrievals based on uh, when they got placed, um, which is, you know, okay. we don't Try see it. a whole lot of that. Yeah, I'm the same way. I have, I have a pretty low threshold to get a CT. I think more and more, I think medicine in general is is going towards, okay. you know, getting a lot more axial imaging um, in terms of pre-op for these things. Uh, filter retrieval, obviously the clinic visit is really critical. Um, if somebody's coming in, as soon as I stop my yeah. AC with a filter, I have Bring really bad down. leg swelling. You know, that's something you'd really want to investigate further. So just getting a CT venogram can save you a lot of trouble. Um, obviously, we have, spell, you know, right. thrombectomy technology, which will allow us to really treat things in real time. But Going into it, that allows you to, you know, talk to the patient and prepare for things, you know, in a way that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. If there's any clot within the yeah. um, filters, are you guys, you know, making use of any of those yeah, distal embolic protection okay. and I then well, at the same time, or do you just anticoagulate and then bring them back? It it depends. I think for uh, if, it depends on how much clot there is. If it's just a little bit of clot, like hanging off the top, you know, if they're not on anticoagulation, I'll put them back on for a short period of time and then rescan. Although I, I find invariably the clot's still there. It seems like it doesn't really get rid of it, but that's sort of what the textbook answer is, is to, to try the anticoagulation. Um, if it's a lot of clot or the clot, or the filter's obviously occluded, then I don't think AC is going to work. And then we have to sort of work work through as an occluded filter, you know, a truly occluded filter. Yeah, I mean, I think we're in a kind of a brave new world here over the past few years. There were kind of the guidelines. If you see oh, something, okay. send it back bring AC it for weeks. But yeah. now with large bore thrombectomy, yeah, bring we have at least the it. opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. to kind of act a little bit more proactively and kind of and, and treat these things a little bit yeah. more aggressively yeah. uh, but again uh, it, i think it comes back to I like can... being prepared for that and really knowing what yeah. you're getting into Go ahead and just grab the, it yeah. the pre-op imaging is really critical for that so uh so Raj, so back to the case at hand so uh scott yeah. raj so what what uh, so it sounds like it looks like here you're trying to do a, a hangman technique so what's your your thought here on what you're trying to do here yeah so, you know the welcome everybody just uh just want to talk here while we're uh, working on this, you know, exactly since, you know, just like, uh, I think, uh, Puneet had mentioned, we actually, uh, felt that this is a, a complex, uh, or classified as a complex retrieval because it is embedded and, uh, and slightly tilted. So we thought we would go right to, uh, one of the complex, uh, you know, one of the maneuvers that we use for complex, uh, retrievals, which is, you know, the loop snare or hangman technique. So we, you know, for you know, basically forego or uh, forwent the, uh, you know, the uh, standard snare technique and hoping we can just get enough of this, but, you know, that the apex and the hook are pretty embedded in there. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about yeah, your setup, kind of what higher. the thought process so, was for that, you know, your yeah. sheets or, you know, how you chose sizes for everything? Yeah. So, you know, I, I think that it's a good idea for these to, Go ahead and do a, uh, you know, a jugular approach uh, to first, uh, you know, uh, you know. I, obviously, we can also consider doing a, a femoral approach. And actually, what I like to do is just 
go ahead and, and do a jugular approach, but have the groin prepped. And so we have that here. And, uh, and then uh, just sort of do a cavergram and, and really get a sense of, uh, let me just see if we can just grab, grab this wire. I'm going to just, um, you know, we're going to just try to see if uh, we can get a sense of whether the standard technique is going to work and give it some time. And then obviously we have a, an escalation of techniques. And so we're sort of on what I would call from the first to the second step which is to go from uh, the standard snare to the, you know, to the hangman or loop snare technique. What, what does the panel think about the success rates in these kinds of patients with the uh, hangman technique? Uh, you know, do, do the panel think that they think it's going to work most of the time? What's, what's been, you know, your experience? So I've been going more and more to going to forceps. I mean, I think we have a lot of tools and just, I find more and more I'm just going straight to forceps and trying to angle it. In terms of your access, I think we had talked about accommodating that. Uh, we had been talking before. I think most of us are using some version, depending on how big we need to go, from like the 1645 or 1840 okay. hooks and then up to the, the 20 centrance if we have to. Um, and that accommodates that. And like I said, I, I'm pretty quick to forceps. Yeah, same here. I'm, I'm Me fairly too. quick to, to go to forceps just because ultimately... I don't find the hangman works all the time, or sometimes I end up getting the wrong part of the filter and ends up making it a bigger mess. So um, I, have a, I have a low threshold yeah. to go to the force of, for these types of filters. Now, I think for other types of filters, I think the story is a little bit different. So I think for for the sort of optis, trapeze uh, kind of thing, or even for green fields, just because you can't necessarily get uh, enough grip with the forceps, yes, it's are. usually a combo technique of using hangman and and forceps. You may need both techniques yep. to, to get it to work. But um, how about you, Mona? Yeah, I think same. For these type of filters, I would probably go to forceps uh, within the first five minutes of <laughs> trying. <laughs> but I do, I do think that you know I have had patients where I have not had them under general anesthesia and they have reacted with the forceps, and yeah. sometimes it just really you know you could be in there with the forceps, kind of just even every movement the patient realizes. Then at that point, I have you know attempted to try and just do it with the hangman technique. And it does, it does kind of work to try and peel that filter basically towards the center of the cava um, a number of times. It just takes a lot, I think, of patience and trying with a <laughs> a conscious. Yeah. Well, now that conscious you're UCLA, too. I think you have to use hangman a little bit more, sure. right? Isn't that kind of obligatory? Let's try. But... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think, it, like you said, it depends a little bit on the filter type. Some of them, you're going to have that closed cell portion, so you can't necessarily go yeah, all the way up, and that could actually tilt it a little bit more. The option specifically, unless you want to go into the closed cells that are at the top, it could be difficult, whereas other types, like a select or anything where you could hangman all the way to the top, it might be yeah, a little bit easier. I think for me, personally, I think having a timer on is really important for me. Are you guys I, getting I mean, um, uh, peripheral access at the same time for most of these, or you kind of just prep it and you know, get it if, if needed. I, I sort of prep and hope for the best. So it's ready to go, but usually, I would say most times we're yeah. able to get it from the top. Sometimes if it's really embedded, really hooked, it's, it's sometimes a bit tricky. Um, it, it always comes out from the groin, but it's always a bit uh, nerve-wracking uh, pulling it yeah. out that way. Yeah. And again, I think Mona makes a good point. I think we have a very low threshold to use uh, general anesthesia for these cases. Um, obviously, the more complicated it looks, the more likely we are to use general anesthesia and go from there. As Mona said, uh, the patients do really feel the forceps, and it's really hard to predict who's going to feel it and who's not. And some people react very badly to it. Do you find that helpful at all? I know, uh, so at meetings, especially a, a couple of years ago, a lot of folks were saying they kind of enjoy not having the GA because they get a little bit of feedback. So if somebody reacts, I don't really find that helpful. No. Some, some folks were saying, people that were kind of experienced operators, you know, if they're reacting more than I would expect, then maybe you know I'm doing something I shouldn't be. I don't personally find that helpful, but I I haven't run into that. Yeah. So Raj, just in terms of your setup, in terms of doing yeah. the uh, hangman, you're so it looks like you're using a reverse curve catheter. You switch to it looks like switch to a sauce just to give you a little bit more. Um, control yeah, the we wire. switched to a contour here, and okay. I agree with all the comments about the about the hangman, but in particularly your comment, Rahul, about you know sometimes I, I find that even when we can. Um, you know, successfully sort of accomplish this hangman, you know, I, I find that, you know, you wind up sort of pulling up on one of the, uh, you know, one part of the filter, one of the legs comes up and, and, and instead of really 
pulling the the hook cleanly off you know and so which is what we're obviously trying to do yeah i'm just going to get this down a little further yeah so you know so i like to use a glide wire and a reverse curve catheter just like you were saying and then just grab it and then just form that uh loop snare and 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 try to see you know just having a little i don't know if you mentioned it. you said you have a what size sheath do you have in the uh in the neck to start well we have we have a twelve right now, okay? Because uh, you know we have the six French uh, gooseneck snare, and I mean the tri snare, Absolutely. excuse me, and uh, and then we have the five French, uh, you know, contra, yeah. you know, to get us. So let's see if we have it here. I think we might have it here. Uh, Thank just, you, close. Yeah, just spin that and oh, oh. Really important for these Too to much. use uh, a glide wire, not use something like a Benson or implants or any steel core wire, because you can definitely. Yeah, exactly. So I just want to make that point for anybody who doesn't have experience and, with this. Yeah. And again, I use a floppy glide as opposed yeah. to like a stiff glide, right? So it doesn't, it's mm -hmm. less likely to flip out your yeah. sauce. Yeah. Have you used, uh, just out of curiosity, have you used uh, the tip deflecting sheaths at all? Well, that's experience? interesting. I have not. That's very yeah. interesting. No, I haven't done it for these. Yeah. It's like the Oscor sheaths. Yeah. Right. I know people have talked about it just because you can just hook it and just sort of drag it back. Thanks. Yeah. It's a great idea. I mean, I, I've used like angled guys to get a little bit more angulation, but not a tip deflecting sheet. Yeah. I've used a tip deflecting yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you French using a laser or considering laser? So we, we don't use the laser really that much or at all. We just sort of use brute force. Or sort of, um, well, you still have to get around the hook. Yeah, exactly. Little, yeah. I think a lot of these pieces are, you, you, yeah. you know, need to get yeah. it kind of uh, yeah. the embedded portion. I, I haven't found a lot of need that I was like, oh, the, yeah, if I had the laser, out. I would have gotten this filter out. You know, I don't know if your, your experience is different. Usually we just sort of pull really hard and it comes out. I mean, I think one of the big benefits of the laser isn't necessarily to get things out like you're saying that we wouldn't otherwise. I think it allows you to do it with a little bit less force. Yeah. But I think, you know, I, I think with experience, you kind of get a feel for, it's kind of what we were saying about feedback from the patient. I think over time, you get a feel about what feels right and what doesn't feel right. Yeah. And you can kind of change around what you're doing if it really doesn't feel right. Mona, how's your experience with the laser been? What's good? What's difficult? I, I haven't totally. really had much there either. I think, like I said, it's, you know, I think uh, a lot of times the tip yeah, is very embedded or very tilted. Yeah, we got the wire, guys. So we're going to try <laughs> yeah. yeah, pull back so on the hangman. Like we got now. it here. Yeah. And let's see if... Uh, we're just going to mag this up and let's center this so we can see what we're doing here. A little tight. bit better. Make sure it's tight so it doesn't pull out. Here we go. Let's just see if we can just grab it here and, and maybe at least displace it. Yep. See it's straightening a little bit. and A lot of times in these type of cases too, I'll uh, use a larger sheet because as we're seeing here, sometimes you'll get the neck of the filter to come in and then the hook is still kind of sitting outside, outside of the, the sheath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of over sheath it with a larger um you got it yeah I, I was actually having this discussion with my fellow yesterday i was like you know like what size sheath to use and i was like what size sheath do you want to use and he said 16 i'm like all right great go 18 because it's always <laughs> you always feel like you're yeah. one size too oh, small let's grab so this just, one yeah and then i'm gonna go one size this. bigger it's a it's a vein it's, it'll 16 to 18 is not a big deal you know um, more, more forgiving. That's yeah. how we think electrical. It must have been that so you trained me or something. I must be. It must be. <laughs> go bigger, go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've definitely been burned, especially because the sheaths that you have, yeah. the, build, the different sheaths you have from the neck are somewhat limited. I mean, um, Argon does have a new sheath, which we haven't used, that dual lumen 16 French mm -hmm. um, sheath. I haven't used it yet, which is a little bit more reinforced um, in an appropriate length for doing sort of the regular work. But for like a... You want to use forceps from the neck without that sheath, you sort of limit it to the cook sheath, and that sheath's not really reinforced. You've had it strip and tear and get stuck in very bad places. So um, from the groin, it's not such a big deal because you, you can use the lengths aren't as big of a, an issue. Um, so, Raj, what are you doing here? Yeah, so look, I don't know if you can see this, but no, you see right. we have the glide. Yeah. It's a 180 okay. glide. Okay. And um, we've Just taken out that, the... Like, we've. Uh, Basically, uh, obviously, uh, pull the wire out using the tri snare, and so we have one end here, and then we pulled out the contra also. So now all we have is just the wire, the you know the the night and all uh, wire, so it doesn't kink, of course. And now we're just ready to go ahead and see if we can just ex basically just get this off of the wall. Mm -hmm. 
And, and Raj, in terms of your setup there, so it's exchange length or it's 180, your, your Gladwire? It's a 180. It's okay. a 180. And you, you have it clamped so on the true. ends? Like, how do you... Yeah. yeah. You'd usually you usually like to just, uh, yeah, just want to show folks, if you can zoom in on the camera, just kind of how we clamp them. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a standard thing we do for any type of snare, but it gives you a, a nice handhold on it as well. Uh, can you see it? Just a, I yep, yep, just a couple I, four steps down there. Uh, you can use anything. Good. Yeah. Good. Cool. Oh, okay. All right. Just don't use yeah. the scissors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. So look, uh, let's see what we can do here with uh, getting this off of there yeah okay see so this is this is the thing with it hmm. right so it's so embedded horizontal sort of platform yeah. to yeah um, now now we've made it it just like steps. uh you were saying yeah. earlier Rahul and yeah yeah. It, yeah so it's it's just like scott is saying it's uh horizontal so yeah, yeah. uh yeah, so right, what, what, we, what should we do way? here yeah it's uh, sometimes like i said it's a little bit hard to predict exactly which way that thing is going to cantilever and in turn, right? You hope it flips the nose, the cone of the filter right. to the right, and a lot of times it just it just tilts to the left, and it gets it gets worse. So yeah, I think at this point you're sort of stuck, right? Like you're gonna have to um, yeah. go to forceps here, sort of give up the the loop snare. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, you know, uh, Debbie, could we trouble you for that 18 French sheet? So you know, I I think. Um, I think we're going to have to go here now to the. Uh, is anybody in the panel think we should Frenchies. continue with this? Because yep. I, I just think that we're going to actually just wind up making it um, even more sort of dis, uh, distorted and yeah. disrupted the culture itself. Yeah, I, I definitely so I think, think, uh, going I think to most of us would just too. go on. Yeah, also. Okay. Yeah, I think most okay. of us okay. would okay, go good. on as well. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let me see if I can just show it here. So this is the Limol, um, you know, forceps uh, uh, 4162. Um, and this is uh, it has the white handle, so this is the one that we want. It's sixty centimeters long, so you want to make sure that your sheath is, uh, you know, forty or forty-five. You don't want to have the sheath be too long. Um, it has a, a three millimeter shaft, and then the jaws themselves are about four, between four and five millimeters. And then it has this sort of um, alligator jaw, alligator teeth, and it has this uh, articulating arm which you can control with the, uh, you know, with the handle here. And then it has this sort of more uh, straight arm. And the idea here is to t get this in there and then to just sort of turn it. I mean, the technique is basically to turn this and sort of, you know, displace the, um, the tip of the uh, filter off of the wall, off of the cable wall, and then to go ahead and, of course, uh, grab the uh, apex and the hook, which uh, probably in this case has uh, some, uh, you know, an endothelialized uh, tissue uh, encasing it. So that's what yeah, we're going to yeah. be doing here. And, um, you know, these will go through a number of different sheets, but we like the, the eight, uh, 18 nice. here. Exchange mm -hmm. it up. Go ahead. So, Roger, I know you, we talked about a little this earlier, about there's different pitfalls and things can come up with the, the forceps, right? So one, yes. one thing, obviously, is they come straight. So the straight doesn't usually work because you got to get it off the wall. So we put a little tilt on it. Um, and yeah. Then, yeah, they're they're re you know they can be sterilized. So we can use them again. The, one of the big issue we have right now is um, don't throw them away because you can't get them or they're very hard to get. So we have our, our certain number. They sort of lose their their grippiness after a while. So we have a couple that are Which not as yeah. gripped Which as uh, as others. Yeah. So Roger, you said I you're going to go up to uh, the 1840. Yeah, we're going to exactly okay. the the wire is a little bit trapped in the filter, so we're just going to actually need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort yeah. of uh, disengage it a little sure. bit. So we're just going to yeah. get a catheter down because it doesn't want to just sort of slide off so easily. The loop, I think, is just... Uh, so, matter what sheath do you use uh, yeah. for, if you use the forceps from the neck? Um, I'll typically go with a, uh, you know, gore dry seal, a larger one, like a 20 or a 24, and then put a 16 through it. Uh, but I, I tend to do the dual sheath technique yeah. to get over the embedded or tilted hook yeah you, you do that just so you can get the you can just pull you can just rip it hold the whole thing inverted into the sheet yeah yeah not a bad idea yeah my concern with the dry seal obviously you put the 16 french through is that you're going to tear the valve coming through and then it just becomes a yeah. mess yeah uh they work well from the groin for for doing like the inversion technique once i'm going four steps i've just gone to either like the like we said the 1645 the 1840 i've actually found in tall patients that extra five centimeters and the 1645 can be helpful yeah um, 
And then, yeah, from the groin, if we're doing filter reversion, which we can talk about a little bit later, that's going to be usually a 20 or, or often a 24 centron for that. This is the 1840 Cook. So actually, it's one thing we didn't talk about. Um, Raj, did you hold the anticoagulation for this patient, or did you just keep it uh, going? Because now we're going to sort of more rip this filter out as opposed to... Yeah. No, I, you know, uh, my protocol has really been to just keep these patients on the anticoagulation. And I, I just leave them on the anticoagulation, obviously, during the procedure. And even afterwards, I ask them to continue it so that, um, you know, we can... Um, you know, we can basically, we just don't want, obviously, things building up on our, on our system, uh, yeah. clot and all. So that's why, and I like to leave them on it. And even if they're not going to be on it anymore, I do leave them on it for even another two weeks afterwards. So that, as you can see, I, I probably have some wall here or some fibrosis. Uh, I'm not around it, but the, the filter obviously is moving, right? Um, and so one of the benefits, I think... Because because it's an optional lead, it's you know a single cut night and all, and so uh, if you do have to ragdoll it, if you do have to kind of grab in the middle and get into the sheath, you know it'll be more forgiving in terms of coming apart, I think, yeah. than some of the more previous welded filters. I think it provides me probably falsely a little bit more comfort if I'm doing an E version. I know I have single cut night and all, then it, it makes me feel it just a yeah. little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's there's no doubt that it feels from below and just inverting it is really uh, might even be. You're just being easier. Again, I'm still just next to it. I guess coming the from nice below where you're coming yeah. right at the... Yeah, you just come right up into the apex. Yeah. right at the... Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. that makes... But, but just like you said, you know, just worry if it's going to it's gonna fracture. The nice thing about coming or having the forceps, if it does fracture and there's a strut that's sort of left in place, with the forceps, you can uh, usually go back and just pull that out so you get the whole thing out. Pull it out, hopefully, before it... Uh, it embolizes. Trying to go in a little 360 here to see what the best angle for this puppy is. Yeah. There you go. Cause this on the yeah, that good. might be. Oh, yeah. you can see right down the barrel yeah. there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right. All right. Like a mama get my mama tiger getting a cup, you know, just by yeah. the neck. <laughs> yep. And now it's so, just brute force, right? So I think. <laughs> Okay, so oh, what I've actually done split, huh, split, uh, is I, I may have split, split, yeah, split, yeah, sliced yeah. the sheath a little bit. All right. Yeah, I think the, the sheath might be a bit. All right. right. Um, now, how did that happen with the sheath before? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you have? Oh, yeah. 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 Because it's not reinforced, right? So. You, you may right. end up having to take it out just from the groin, right? Yeah. 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 And just invert it's it. Still um, or if you just let it go and then just I mean, try to reposition like the tip. Can, yeah, let it go and kind of just, walk it so that it reaches yeah. out. Yeah, you might be able to try to walk it, you know, to get yeah. the, the, the hook, you know? Yeah. Uh, know. If you have like more of the force that's out of the. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. But the I thing think, is, I think it's so tilted, it's not going to yeah. straighten, right? Yeah, and, and I think your sheath's so buggered. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. I think you're going to have to do it from yeah, the groin. The yeah. yeah. I wouldn't drag it too high because you're never going to be able to get it from the, the groin, right? You yeah. know, you're in, a, you're in a position right now where you have a hold of it. It's not going to go anywhere. So you can always kind of come from below. You can always grab it or even snare it just for yep. stability the four steps, um, six, six. To, to make sure it doesn't fly. Yeah. It's, it's always an option. So you're, you're in a stable location right now with a good hold on it. Maybe we can. I don't yeah, think although we I think right now it's forcep. pinned. Right now it's sort of pinned, right? You could use the yeah. other sheath to pin it. Hold it now. So are you guys going to try to go from the groin or are you guys going to. What's the thought process now? Let's get up from the groin. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I think that's the best way is just yeah. go yeah. ahead and just. Uh, we have the groin prepped. The other thing you can do is if you don't have another four steps, you it. could hangman it from the, from the groin and just yeah. grab it, right? And then get the four mm -hmm. steps, you know, mm -hmm. put a 20 French right. in the. Thing and then right, grab yeah, it, right, right to, to pin it once you can yeah, let go yeah. of it, yeah. Well, I think the plan was always to do dueling yeah. forceps. This was just kind of our opportunity to do it. <laughs> to show how shitty the, uh, <laughs> how, exactly. how bad the cook sheath is. I mean, th this is exactly how we drew it up. I mean, yeah. I guess, does anybody think that some of the other sheets, this may not have happened where it, you know, sort of... Uh, I think if you know, we had sliced. done Mona's uh, trick with the gore, it, it might have not tore the sheath. The, the gore is pretty t tough to... Uh, mm. 
to share like this. The cook sheet's pretty pretty thin. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of what we were talking about before, where there's limited options. I think the centrant is is a lot stronger, but like you were saying, you just don't have the length. I think 28 is the longest it comes in, right? 28. Yep. Yeah. So you wouldn't really have the length. Yeah. Um, and like like I was that's saying, right. even the 45 over 40 can be helpful in taller patients. So the centrant just isn't going to get you there unless you're coming from the groin. Um, um. I mean, there are really outside the box ways you could try to do something from like the left neck if you were going to snare, but I really think that the best way to try to at least stabilize it's just going to be trying to straighten it out right now. Oh, uh, there we go. It's there straight. we go. It's yep. Yep. We got it. I, I let, I got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So I let it's go. It's also the threat. And, and, uh, exactly. No, I actually let go of it and then grab it closer to the hook. All right. Yeah. No, Excellent. she blows. Right. Oh, yeah. Nice shot. Strong Scott. word. There you, right. Right. Well, you want to save that plural and show yeah. it and kind of, Scott, you want to talk yeah. through kind of what you did there? I think, I think it's really important to kind of, uh, kind of talk through what you did there and how you got yourself, uh, to a position where you can. No, get absolutely. That. Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously the, the issue was the fact that we had, um, can we play it? uh, a filter on either side of the graspers that was acting as sort of this, uh, cutting device, right? Uh, with the sheet. So I just let, <laughs> so I just let go of, uh, where I was, which is about a couple, about half a centimeter something. from the tip from the hook. And I just sort of angled a little more, grabbed actually the hook cause it was in a better position to grab. And then it sort of converted itself to just being straight and coming out as opposed yeah. to being this big, uh, cutting device. So here's right. the filter just to, to show, you know, that all the legs are here, all six legs. I always, you know, get a single shot or, or an x-ray of the, the chest just to make sure there's no legs already there and then do it at the end just to make sure all the legs are there, you know, count the legs kind of thing. Because I don't want to get blamed for, for broken legs if it was there before I got there, you know? So, 100%. <laughs> right. And prior, prior filter retrievals yeah. and even wires, you know, prior yeah, wires yeah. Uh, can be. Yeah. Any, any filter that's a couple years old, especially if I only have a CT, I mean, you can see it on the scout. I'll literally just mag up almost to the size of the screen and take two orthogonal 1Xs. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's good. That's just bad. Yeah, there was a vein there. That's yep. what that yeah. was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Gorgeous. Looks good. And, you know, anesthesia, hemodynamically, how are we doing? Oh, thumbs up from anesthesia. So yeah. that's one of the things, <laughs> yeah. too, is Most to important. see how they're doing hemodynamically. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Simple question. Like, what are you going to do, you know, in terms of removing the sheath? Are you just going to hold pressure per string, mattress suture? Usually for these, I, I, I just hold pressure and just make yeah. sure that they're upright yeah. and uh, that should be enough for, uh, for them. So, uh, I think we're just going to go to the slides for a second, just real quick. Uh, and, and then uh, and, and one last thing, by the way, six legs on here. So we always yeah. photo document, take yeah. a picture of this and, and add it to the chart. So, yeah. um, and as uh, mentioned earlier, also take a look at the lungs, make sure there's nothing there. Um, but yeah, so we always photo document these just to make sure uh, there's no issues or questions. Just uh, some of the tips with the... The forceps, uh, you know, just uh, especially when you're coming from the neck, you know, it's possible. Let me just go to the uh, the image showing the forceps first, uh, and then, uh, or even this one here is good. You know, is that it's easy for the sheets to get displaced into certain veins. Uh, not sure if you can see it on the screen here, but uh, it's a we have beautiful a couple shot of, of images of our, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of the sheath sort of. Uh, you know, inadvertently, yeah. once you get the wire out the to, uh, the you know, fall, fall into the, yeah. And then the forceps in the gonadal too. Exactly. So, you know, one of the things you want to sort of be mindful of is where your sheath is, you know, uh, you could certainly use a, uh, a buddy wire that would help. And, uh, you know, in some cases, depending on uh, how big of a sheath you have, <laughs> that might, uh, you know, be useful here, but, uh, just sort of keep these things in mind, uh, know where your sheath is, know where the forceps are. Uh, you know, because obviously, uh, you know, having operator experience with this is uh, is really critical. Thanks, guys. It was a great case.